to Roman Blessings, Warriors of Evil and the Truth. Um, I thought I'd try something a little different tonight. Um, I don't know if you guys feel like um, it's better with the eyeliner or better without the eyeliner. I'm here to give all praise and esteem to our Abba Yahuwah, not for myself at all. And Yahuwah Yahusha was for me through the Ruach HaKodesh. Um, Belladina says Shalom, Shalom. And I apologize I didn't get to do the videos earlier. Um, there was just a lot of stuff going on. Um, so we are going to continue on in the return of Yahusha. And if you haven't yet, please like, subscribe, and share down below. Questions and answers. In the Hebrew tradition, a question was often answered with another question, or at least it was a way of guiding and perfecting the question. Asking the proper question is as important as getting the right answer. The answers need not be complex, but simple. And to the point. When answers swell to many words, watch out. When words are many, transgression is not absent. But he who restrains his lips is wise. Proverbs 10.19 In scripture, questions were used to test. Solomon was tested in such a way. Yahushua was questioned to test him and often to trap him in his words. I consider questions to be valuable tools to learn with, but the answers have to be weighed carefully and may overinterpret a given question. Over the years, people have asked Brother Lou questions, and he's going to show you what they were and how he responded at that time. Any errors he may make with, with his answers are simply because he, he doesn't know everything. And he's just a human being who is more than qualified to make errors. We really need to hear how Yahusha would answer these questions because we already know the Brother Lou already knows his answers will be incomplete and slanted due to a lack of knowing the underlying facts. Same goes for me. Many who read these questions and answers may have made up their minds on the issues and not agree fully with the answers provided. There are bound to be differences between because we all form strong opinions on a great number of issues. We so expect that. Taken together, these questions will provide some level of help to us all and in many cases, in many cases he remains open to see things differently than how his answers are leaning. He's open to new light. So forgive his limited or mistaken perceptions where they may occur and look at the hunger to understand in both the ones asking and himself. Above all, we pray for wisdom. We pray for the light of his world. Question. Lou, a gentleman that I work with, has asked me several times if I knew any information about, Mel about Melchizedek. Do you know where I could get some knowledge or wisdom? And um, on the bottom, Mach-Teach, or it's M-A-P-H, and then teach, like, like a teacher, T-E-A-C-H. Concordance number 4668. Hebrew, word for key, opening, utterance, the name which was withheld from the people in Yahushua's day was Yahuwah, yod heh -uh -heh. It is suppressed by contemporary translators, removing it from your text roughly 6,823 times. I have also heard from a few people that it's more around like 10,000 times it was removed. Um, using this key will open to us great knowledge. Listeners or hearers of Torah only will not make it. Okay, listeners or hearers only. You have to be doers of the word as well. 
we must be doers of the word, it says here. Yes. We unlock the door. We unlock the door to our hearts, and he will come into our lives. The an okay, so if you guys forgot the question, it was about the Melchizedek, where they could find more information on the Melchizedek. Answer. I share the interest in the life of the man scripture calls Melchizedek. There have been articles here and there that I've read that sparked interest in this man, and the writers had only scripture to go on, as I recall, because there seems to be no other source material to track him. One of the most interesting speculations as to his identity was made by one of the articles. This was that Melchizedek was in fact Shem, the son of Noah, or Noah. The name Melchizedek means king of righteousness. So it could have started out as a kind of title people called him because he taught them Torah, the way of life. Shem simply means name. So Melchizedek could have been a second name taken by Shem. But we cannot say this is anything but speculation. Hebrews speaks of Melchizedek more specifically. My personal opinions as to who Melchizedek is comes from Hebrews 7.3, which states this individual was without father, without mother, without genealogy, having neither beginning of days nor end of life. But made like, like the son of Elohim, he abides a priest perpetually. So Hebrews chapter 7 provides us with the true nature and function of this king of righteousness. There's really not much chance Paul believed he was Shem, but it is certainly interesting to think about. Okay, and we will finish the, uh, we will go on to the next question tomorrow. I hope you guys have a blessed evening. Yahuwah Baruch you and keep you. Shalom. Thank you.